All right, episode 83. Boom. We finally finally out. hit up a book review. This is actually the first in a book review. Yeah. We're still going to go by the by the numerical values that have been already been counted. So it's technically episode 83 even though it's mm-hmm. book review number 1. Yes. Maybe we should put that in the title somewhere. Book review number 1, episode 83. Okay. But we That's up to you. We we dissected Bhagavad Gita. Say this. The Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, hear that? Bhagavad Gita. Say this. Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> yeah, Western Bhagavad Gita. Well, somewhat scuffed Western Eastern Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> but you're more Eastern than I am because you speak. I guess uh, so. Speak Hindi. I, I speak like. No, I don't speak any book. language. But you understand it. Right? What? Hindi? No. You don't. Not in, there's so many languages in oh, India. Well, what do you what do you understand, Bish? Wow, well, I would say it's more, its own podcast on itself. <laughs> it's more like Canada. That's what it's called. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, I remember you told me that once. Anyways, yeah. this is uh, this is the Bhagavad Gita book of you. Enjoy it. Here we go. Two, one, boom, and we're back with another episode of Crack Gamers. This is actually not. A weekly roundup. I was about to say this is your weekly roundup, but uh, no, this is the first in a series of book reviews. Yeah, yeah. Vish, Vish had the sweet idea because I read a lot of books that we should talk <laughs> about some books. Um, yeah, because like a lot of books get like a lot of acclaim. Yeah, and uh, and like the 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 assumption is that like oh they're really really good so it's partially why I pick them all up and I mm-hmm. read them just to see if they're actually as good. And, like, I got told once, oh, maybe you didn't understand it, but it's, like, by a person that also didn't read it. So it's, like, right. so what do you mean? You didn't even read it, bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're going to start off this series and uh, dissect a bunch of books that are supposedly really good, and we'll see if they're actually really good. The Vish has not read any of these books. Because I don't a, read? He does not read. He watches <laughs> a lot of docs, like... Which I find kind of funny because it's like people are like, oh, like you read a lot, but it's like, yeah, but you watch a lot of TV, which I don't. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's the yeah, same yeah, amount yeah. of time. You know, it's I, the same amount of time. That's true. Right. And like when you when you train your eyes like to get faster at reading, like I could probably read a 200 page book in maybe like four hours. It's pretty good. Yeah. Well, it sounds pretty good, but it's like you, you'll finish a whole movie or a doc in four hours as well, and you'll you'll gain you know bunch of knowledge as well because mm-hmm. like because like the more you read you'll notice that like a lot of books are filled with fluff right like they'll put a bunch but like like i've i've like sped read through those um fluff parts and i slow down whenever it gets really good mm-hmm. you know what I mean? it's like oh okay this is like you're describing blah 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 right but it's like that's not necessary right now or or you've read so many examples that you know exactly what they're talking about right you know what i mean it's like doing a bunch of math problems that are like addition you get faster at addition over time oh i see but if i was reading like a science book i'd have to slow down and be like okay let me cross-reference like what is this where's this you know what i mean yeah yeah so all right so the first book we thought we would talk about was the bag of Gita. right yeah it's not the well it's also it's a translation from yes barbara miller i think it was yeah it's barbara miller i've read uh, another one and i've heard different iterations of this uh story before yeah, the other one I uh, Mitchell something it wasn't that good. Like I I picked it up again to like browse through it really quickly and like be like oh what was this like how is this translation again? But like the Barbara Miller one, her name is Bob- Barbara Miller. Yeah, check the book. Oh, shit, it's right, it's right here. Uh, yes, um, right there. Barbara Stoller Stoller. Yeah, Miller. Yeah, right. Barbara Miller. This is a really good translation. <laughs> Uh, cause they made it like, they made it very like easy to read and more of like a novel. Oh, okay. You know, like, like the one I read Mitchell's one is kind of like a poem, but this one's more of like a dialogue that's not as poetic and it's more like, right. Practical. I think the, the original is like a poem. Yeah. No, all, right? all, all versions of this book are poems. Gotcha. Like, but no, it's not really poems. They're written. No, like I know what you're yeah, but like they're they're um, set up like poems. Like yeah, each yeah. one is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like they're like short. That's why you can read it really quick. It's like it's mm. this is probably like two hours of reading. Right. Maybe maybe three if you're kinda of slow. But it's just the discipline of sitting for three hours, you know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. I wouldn't do it. But right. yes, yeah, so if you haven't read it, you should definitely pick it up. Basically, the summary is. Actually, do you do you wanna do you wanna give a bit of what you you know, like what you well, believe the summary to be? Like you grew up, you grew up. Hindu, well, you read so. the book, though. We're talking about the book specifically. No, no I right? know, but like in Hindu lore, like what what did? I don't know exactly what it covers. The um, Bhagavad Gita itself. Hmm. I know specific stories. I like that... the way you say that. Say that again. The Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, I say Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. It's very Western. <laughs> Sorry, you're saying yeah. Uh, because uh, like I know stories of. Um, Mahabharata and Ramayana, and I don't think I think only Mahabharata is part of this one. Yeah, Maha. Ma, well, I say Mahabharata because again, Western. Uh, that's like the the full book, yeah. and then the Bhagavad Gita is like like a section of that book. Like it's it's a short. It's like a moment. All right, so I'll I'll just give the summary. So basically, uh, the context is a war is about to happen, and uh, Arjuna right. yeah. is the prince. And his charioteer is Krishna, but Krishna is also a god. I don't think he knows that Krishna is a god. I'm not too sure. I I, I got to read the Bhagavad Gita. No, like, because the, the yeah, yeah. Okay, you could, you're finished, and I'll talk about Krishna a little bit. Okay, cool. So he he goes to the battlefield and he sees on the other side are like his family members, and he's like, Krishna, I can't kill my family, and Krishna's like, but it's your duty, you know. So like, just rise up and and like fulfill your duty. Right. But in order to fulfill your duty and get your mind out of the way, he teaches him yoga. Mm-hmm. And and this is the first time the word yoga has ever been used. And that's where, like, all the practice uh, stems upon. Like, this whole, like, Western practice of, like, what is yoga and stuff. Yeah. It all comes from this one book. So yeah. if you haven't read the book, it's like, well, if you want to know yoga, just read the book and, like, yeah, mm-hmm. you'll you'll get it. But so... So one thing that I found really interesting, I will start talking about it and then you can jump in, sure. is um, that yoga has nothing to do with postures. Mm-hmm. Yoga is, like they said, there's like four paths to yoga, which is like uh, uh, bhakti, gyan, karma, and raja. And uh, so bhakti is worship. So yeah. it's like you just, but when you look at it, it's just like different ways to get your mind out of the way. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's what yoga is. It's like set aside your mind and then fulfill what it is you're about to do. Yeah. Right. So bhakti is like, okay, if I just devote myself to God, I don't even have to think about it. God, it's in God's hands. My mm-hmm. mind's gone. Uh, if that doesn't work, there's karma, which is you you do for the sake of others. So you put yourself, you put somebody else above yourself. So okay. you won't be thinking about. It. You're like, okay, well, I have to, I have to put my mind aside because it's for this other person. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's that. Uh, Raja is activity so you put your mind aside by by exhausting yourself you know and you like go for like a run or like you do like a workout and you're like oh i feel a lot better it's because your mind has moved out of the way right and then gion which is the one i i love the most because uh it's the most difficult they say because you're using your mind to get rid of the mind you logically come to the conclusion that you should set aside your mind but it's hard because like in order to do that you have to you have to be so open-minded that's like maybe my belief is incorrect or mm-hmm. maybe there's something wrong with me. You know, but a lot of people say – even a lot of people even say that they can do that, but they can't actually do it, you know. Right. Nobody likes to be told they're wrong. Yeah. So um, he teaches – Krishna teaches Arjuna this. And uh, basically yoga – the conventional yoga that we know in the West is like you go do the postures and stuff. which That's like one form, which is the Raja yoga. Right, it's the physical activity to get your mind out of the way, mm-hmm. and then, uh, but when, but there is no mention of any like actual postures in the Bhagavad Gita. Right. Yoga itself is just sitting down, and it, your eyes aren't even supposed to be closed. You just sit with your spine straight, and you breathe, and then you like let your your eyes blur out. You like lose focus, and you just like you calm yourself that way. Actually, yeah, no, that is yeah. the, that is the, yeah, it's a sitting posture. That's all that is. That's, that's the only posture they yeah. ever taught yeah. in the book. Yeah. And then from that, everyone extrapolates like, oh, like, you know, Tadasana, Savasana, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mountain pose, all these like crazy like things. But like, if you really look into it, it's more, that's more just stretching. It's like ways to exercise the body. Right. You know, yeah. or like make your body more conducive to breathing mm-hmm. because I was told once that the whole idea is that you like you stretch your body to make it like malleable for for breath work and then you sit in meditation. Gotcha. Okay. But it's like that will, that whole thing was never in 
the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. That was never taught as a piece of yoga. Yoga itself is just sitting. Yeah. You know, which which I find cool because, like, the Zen practitioners also do the same thing. Um, You know, they just sit. It's called Mm -hmm. Zazen. And you just sit. You don't do anything. You don't even close your eyes. You just sit there. That's the whole practice called sitting practice. Yeah, I mean, even the Buddhism, the monks do the same thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most standard position, I guess. That's the... Yeah. So um, what, I guess that dispelling out of the way, uh, what were you going to say about the, the Mahabharata? Uh, yeah, I know, like when or you mentioned, uh, no, when you mentioned um, Krishna, mm-hmm. uh, I like guess it's, it's depicted uh, in like, in a couple of ways where like, he's the avatar of Vishnu. Right. So he's its human form. Uh-huh. But... For I don't like what gets confusing sometimes is like do we know he's God do they know he's God, or, right? So that's where actually I have I have a complete this is like so left field but uh, I I have a theory on this but go ahead okay so it's just like uh, at, like when he comes to him like this is still continuing from Krishna's own story that I know okay yeah um, that like is uh, a rep, like. Uh, is very similar to like Zeus, Zeus' story, or even right, 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 even right. Jesus' story. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so, uh, um, and then, like getting involved with the Mahabharata was like, he was still continuing. He was like he was still, he was a king actually. Who uh, Krishna? Krishna? Oh, okay. See, I didn't. Yeah, that's that in the book. He's a charioteer. Yeah. So either he's uh, coming to help out that kingdom. Right. That he's. You know, like stepping outside of his area. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, his name does that or something. Like, like he was doing that, but he wasn't. It's like, like his a, job at that moment. Yeah. Okay, true. Yeah. Uh, because I guess he, I don't know. If, like, again, it's his story. So if he's like God, then it's like he knows where he needs to be to right. kind of like, uh, you know, because the whole point of Vishnu that is preserver, right? right okay. So that's his job. In a sense. Wait, uh, wait, Vishnu is Krishna. Vishnu's avatars are yeah, Krishna and Ram for Ramana. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. So these are human forms of him. All right. So, so my my uh, totally left field. But when I was reading it, so when you study like these ancient traditions and stuff, like psychedelics are a huge part of uh, spiritual growth, right? Like uh, the Eleusinian mysteries, Eleusinian mysteries in Greece, where like they take like heavy doses of LSD, the the uh, the yogis of old would take this thing called soma, which they believed was like weed and mushrooms, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, like like mushrooms are a huge part of a lot of religious um, yeah. things. But so so when I was reading it this other time, and I was like looking at his analogy. I almost believe that Krishna is like a drug that Arjuna brought around, like like a like like acid. It's like I'm about to take this to remember the truth. You know what I mean? Because like he's about to go into battle, and like he him asking for counsel from Krishna is almost like he dropped a bunch of acid, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna see the reality of the situation. It's not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like. Even this part in the book where they're like, oh, reveal to me your many forms, Krishna. And then Krishna, like, shows, like, he's, like, a, like, friggin' a demon, basically. Like, like, millions of fangs and, like, they just describe him as this, like, impossibly big demonic thing. And he's like, but you're supposed to be good, you know? Um, But, like, that almost sounds like a bad drug trip. Like, he took it and he's like, okay, show me the reality of the situation. It's like, oh, I got hit with, like like a bad trip mm-hmm. you know and uh well one th- like a few things that I, I liked about the book is it talked about like Taoism without calling it Taoism because in it he says like uh to truly know is to know that it's like beyond good and bad yeah you know yeah. and uh and even him turning into like a giant demon he's like but you're supposed to be good but he's like no but I am both good and bad I'm, I'm everything yeah so he's a preserver yeah so it's like okay so so yeah, it's yeah. like, but but in the in the Taoism, it's like, uh, it's like yin and yang, right? It's like the good and the bad, light and dark, and like mm-hmm. they they make reference to this all the time. 
you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Krishna does when he's explaining the universe. That's why he's. Uh, that's what I'm saying. That's why he's made. He's the most. Like he's part of these stories, like out of the three main gods. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vishnu is the one that's part of these stories, not Shiva, not Brahma. Right, 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 right. right. Oh. He's the one that's the centerpiece. <laughs> uh, so, okay, wait. So, uh, Shiva is the destroyer. Mm-hmm. Brahma is creation. Yeah, he's a creator. And Shiva, uh, Vishnu is susten- sustenance. Yeah. Which is like the Presumably. the triad of um, yeah yeah like if you, if you look at like uh, things mm-hmm. if you look at things in the universe they all fall either in creation destruction or sus- sustenance yeah. sustaining yeah, yeah right that's that's pretty fast that's what that's one of the things that like drew me to uh, Hindu Hindu lore it's mm-hmm. like they've they've encapsulated these truths about reality. Right. And as like through analogies, whereas like yeah. in Greek mythology, they kind of do it, but it's more like the emotions of human beings because each god in Greek mythology is like a different for like um, uh, uh-huh. there's Athena, which is love. There's um, Hades, which is hate. Right. You know, what I mean? uh, like they, yeah, they, yeah, if, yeah. They, and all the stories are very like emotion filled. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. But are, are they emotion filled? It doesn't seem that way to me in in. Uh, um, no, 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 but um, I don't think they are. But uh, like the reason, again, it goes into history why they're similar and certain, mm-hmm. like why the stories are similar is like uh, it, it follows even like the evolution of language. Right, 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 right. right, right, right. So it, it's very interesting to see how they all match. But and, and like and like we we're saying, but that. there could be differences because they have local people would have different stories. So like. Right. Probably, like the ones who brought these things ac- into India mm-hmm. um, probably had local legends and local stories that would mix in along with whatever was coming in new, right? For sure, for sure. And and like how um, the um, how like the Silk Road, like trade, trade was the biggest thing for human beings, right? And that's mm-hmm. how we like spread things. Yeah. But through trade, we also spread ideas like religion, mm-hmm. right? And that's why. Um, you you get very very similar concepts being passed down, yeah. But through different stories mm-hmm. to different cultures, it's it's funny how like because of globalization now, we we think of these parts as separate, but they we've been interacting for like forever. Yeah, for a very long time with each other. Yeah, you know, we yeah. we just think of it like oh that's an Eastern religion thing. But it's like no East came to the West before. You know? Yeah, there's yeah there's a lot of mix and mingling happening. Yeah, we just we just don't think that, about it. Uh, you know? J- yeah. Just like uh, that book, the other book, um, The Lost Years of Jesus. Yeah. And he's actually, so Jesus, that could be another book we could actually dissect. But mm-hmm. but basically, Jesus is Isa, which is in the, uh, what, what religion is that? Hindu religion? Tibetan? I think it's Tibetan. Uh, yeah, Buddhism, I guess. Right? Bu- Buddhism, yeah. He's Saint Isa. Like, or, I don't know if he was in Buddhism, but. But he went to, like, he went to Tibet, then he went to India, and then he yeah. came back to Jerusalem where he was born. And like spread these things, but like yeah. we or know, or like it's like northern India. I don't know if it was. It might have been. It might have been Tibet. It was like some German that found these the books. Yeah, the yeah, books, yeah. right? Yeah. And they make mention of Isa, and like when yeah. they read the stories, they're like, oh, this is this is Jesus. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I, I think we like we convolute, we like mix things together. Um, mm-hmm. uh, here's a cool word: conflate. <laughs> it means like you mix things up. So okay. we conflate these uh, these stories, mm-hmm. and we assume that they're separate, but they're actually the same origin. They have like a s- same connect. They've like you know that like uh, ten degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever. Like right. you try and like connect the dots and stuff. Like mm-hmm. how yeah, basically uh, it seems like that we've just forgotten that they're all interconnected or yeah, they've interacted yeah. at some point with one yeah. another. Yeah, I mean things d- happen and then we. Yeah, like why wouldn't you take a good idea? Yeah. Like, like how um, so in the West you hear of like Zen, and you also lo- hear about uh, Hinduism, and you hear about Buddhism. Yeah. But hin- from Buddhas, uh, from Hinduism birth Buddhism, from Buddhism mm-hmm. birth Zen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like yeah, they're they're evolving off one another. You just don't know that. We just hear them as separate entities. Right. Yeah. So um, that all right. So an- another thing that I thought was really cool was determinism was talked a lot in the book. Yeah, which is an interesting perspective you told me about. Yeah, like so, so 
we we think of ourselves as having free will but krishna often makes mention that we have no free will we're just acting out a play <laughs> you know well um i think it was like plato who said like you're just we're all just oh the world's a stage and we're all just actors something like that right that's like a that's a greek thing right but in in, in uh, indian philosophy or hindu philosophy yeah they they talk about the exact same thing but Krishna's saying like just do your dharma your duty because because mm-hmm. like you're supposed to do it yeah then you know, what uh, stop, yeah. stop like yeah. fighting it you know which is like and he's like even he says he says in it inaction is also action mm. you know okay. yeah so no, it's oh, like yeah. yeah of course so like we met we talked about that too right yeah Before, exactly when people are like oh just do something it's like well not doing something is also doing something yeah right but that in that manner it's like you're you're still playing a part of so even if you think oh, i'm not going to be a part of this right yeah. like i'm not going to let fate decide for me mm. krishna mentions that like you don't realize that even saying that is a part of fate Right. The, he says, like the the band of understanding sees the totality and understands that he has no, no choice mm-hmm. in the matter. It's not it's not me who's doing it. It's it's playing itself out. Right. Which makes complete sense if you actually look at determinism, because if you look at like cause and effect, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you can find a cause to your action, then it's determined. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Krishna Krishna mentions that so many times <laughs> in the thing because like Arjuna's like I don't want to do it I don't want to do it but it's like you're already doing it mm-hmm. you know yeah that's uh, I don't know if that really relates but it's like the lines like uh, you know, we're, we are just uh, putting on a play that's yeah, already been yeah. Oh, know, wait, wait. set up for the gods oh no I never heard that one that's cool like something like that where it's like it's where the like the movie's already there yeah as the gods are watching us yeah, 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 play out this movie or whatever I've, for them. I've heard like uh, you are, you are in a theater watching yourself as the actor in the play, mm-hmm. in the movie. So. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like it's all taken from those sort of same sort of things. And but it's just... but if it really is a movie, every movie has an end. Like it, every movie is already predetermined. You're mm-hmm. just watching. That's the what actor. I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like even yeah. in that analogy, determinism. Yeah, is there's already like, a script. Yeah, that exactly. they're following. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Determinism. Yeah, yeah, it goes back to our same yeah, the free will thing, exactly. Like if, we only have the illusion of free will. Yeah, we just, yeah, we yeah. just choose to believe it. Right. But even even choosing to believe it is deterministic because there was a there was a cause. You didn't want to feel helpless. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, so this book um, just goes into that kind of thing, like uh, or yeah, basically these are your basically, perspectives from the book. No, no, no. He actually he literally talks about this in order to get Arjuna to to stand up and fight. Okay. He tells them like, okay, I'm going to teach you a way to get out of your own head. And then mm-hmm. right, if that doesn't work, understand that you're not in control. If that doesn't work, just freaking do it. <laughs> you know, like just, okay. he just keeps his whole idea is like get him to, to fight because he has to fight. Yeah. Because yeah. it, and, and if you look at the word Dharma, people like think of it like, oh, that's your duty, like your, your spiritual duty. Yeah. But it, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's meant to be that way. You know, I guess it could be wrong. It's right, yeah. I mean, there's the, yeah, this but, is what happens with perspective, right? But but I think what Dharma means is, like, it's, like, it's already your predetermined, like, yeah. way. Or, hmm, maybe it's like this. It's, like, well, right, life is predetermined, but in trying to fight life, you, you get um, antsy. Okay. Like, you get, like, a lot of pent-up emotion. Mm-hmm. Like, see... It's hard to it's hard to call determinism. Like it's hard it's hard to like say everything's determined because then people are like, well, where did I come up with this uh, this thought from this okay. concept? Yeah. But just because you can't figure out where it came from doesn't mean that there wasn't a specific cause for it. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. And and um, yeah. I don't know, sorry, I just got confused there. Because I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to think. Because I was like, there's so many layers to determinism. Yeah, yeah. it's like you, because one could argue, you know, like, yeah, because because like it, because all right, so people are like, oh, the Dharma is like you have to follow your correct path, and it's like, yeah, but I I see dar- Dharma as like following your natural tendencies, mm-hmm. but simultaneously, Dharma could also mean that 
everything's already predetermined, so you're acting it out anyways. Right. So it's like, what layer of the path do you want to attach to? Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, what I'm saying it's yeah. like it's like you could take it on the level of like, okay, I've always wanted to be a painter, but I'm working in a bank. So then, all right, go follow your true dharma, become a painter. Right. That's like the that's like the superficialish level. Yeah. Right. Like that's like level one, let's say. Oh, yeah. And then the deeper level would be like your dharma is what you're doing right now because that is predetermined. So it's like there is really no dharma. Mm-hmm. Dharma is just like the word for you're doing it because you're supposed to be here. But you hear that all the time, you know, like you're here because you're supposed to be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And then people are like, but they take it so non-deterministic. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's because I, you know, I was meant to be here. Like, I'm, I'm, like they, they don't, like they hear it and they think they're special, but they don't realize that it's just basically saying that like it's <laughs> predetermined <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean it's like, for a lack of a better term yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I think it's it's a very it's a very heavy concept because we can get so caught up in, in this play mm-hmm. you know it's like what do you mean my emotions aren't mine and all that right yeah uh, anything that you thought was missing from the book missing you, like what do you mean missing like any criticisms to the book that or like or just in general, it was like what it or maybe I guess what I didn't like from it. Yeah, or you disagreed with? Oh, disagreed with. Um, well, I I don't speak Sanskrit, so I can't really like I'm only going off like multiple people's translations. Gotcha. Um, so that's another thing too, right? Even even though it's an old book, there's a lot of things that happen even during that time in India too that could have people have it. you know I mean people have different discussions all the time. Like people don't realize that. Even during these times, there were atheists that were uh, having all these sort of discussions. Right, 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 right. That we just end up reading about these things and they're thinking everybody was religious or everybody had, you know, this type of viewpoint. Right, right, right. Or this is the only I, book that survived, let's say. Actually, because actually, I, was, I was thinking about it as you're you saying that, like, you're like, what do you disagree with? Mm-hmm. I guess I would say I did disagree with all of it. Okay. Because it's just a, it's just like, my own interpretation of it because it's just written as a story okay you know they're not actually preaching anything so you uh so you're adding your perspective to the story is that what like all the things that i said were were actual words from the book okay right but your understanding of it um right that's what i'm trying to say like like, so so it's like it's like okay the cat was told not to go to the store Mm mm-hmm but he went anyways, and he died. Okay. So I could just see that at face value. Okay, the cat went to the store. He wasn't supposed to, and he died. Mm-hmm. That's it. But you can also look at the levels of it. And you're like, oh, this is why you should always listen to other people. You should always heed warnings. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the book never explicitly said anything. Okay. Like, it didn't It So that's what I'm things. saying. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. So, like, if you haven't read any of these sort of things or haven't read any past books or past... Things. Oh, you'd be so lost. No, you no, no, wouldn't no, no, understand no. Yeah, what no, we're no, getting no. here. Yeah, no, no. Don't don't read this book and think this book is word for word the truth. It's like the Bible. It's like there's no way this thing is right. literal truth. So you're exactly that's what I'm saying. It's so. totally an analogy. You have to read other things and then relate them back. And then relate them back. Yeah. Or okay. not. I mean, you could just take it at face value, you know. Um Right. What, what's his name? So yeah, that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. So the book itself you're not gonna get what we're talking about but the other things that you've read or experienced yeah, I've, that's I've, I've adding linked it on, together yeah onto, basically that's what i'm saying yeah okay it's almost like not even a book review this is like a book uh explanation <laughs> yeah, i, I like guess a, so yeah uh, book yeah. analysis or, yeah yeah in some way yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's what i was trying to say adding the book review part of it which is <laughs> what i'm trying to do oh okay true 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 yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't call these book reviews because like is it a good book? Yeah, I think you ever. No, I mean, we could still do that. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say, right? Like, you're. It is different from. Well, you're. You're not going to get this out of the book right away. No, no, not at all. Okay. Like you're. You might get it, but you need to like, because it's like the second time I've read it. Okay. And With it's different, like, ex- like yeah, you've different understandings, and you've read so like other the first, things that you're adding yeah. on to. It. So like I first read this book, 
uh, three three years ago. Okay. And then three or four years ago, maybe now. And then I read a bunch of other books. And then returning back to the same story, it's like, oh, I'm getting more. Right? Guy Ritchie says you can glean what there is to glean when you're ready to glean what there is to glean. Mm -hmm. Like people who watch King Arthur, they're yeah. like, oh, it's a, it's a story about a person and a sword. Yeah. But if you actually look at the, the in-depth, you know, yeah. analogy of King Arthur, you see so many levels to it. Right. You See, that's, that's, and that's what that's all stories are, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It depends on your even your background of your knowledge of certain things. Yeah, if for sure. Into exactly. Because yeah. then when you start to get into like like politics, then it's like, well, what did they leave out of the book? Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. Yeah. That's why I would answer it with like, what did you disagree with? I would say I disagreed with all of it because it's like it's obviously not true. This is not directly saying what we're what you're saying right now. Right. It's just no. But but there is like. There is like, I I see it like, I see it like you, if you're a student of yoga, mm -hmm. you would take this, you should take this as the prescribed action because if you are a true student, it, it's like being, it's like believing in the, it's like uh, being, uh, saying you're Christian and you don't believe in the Bible makes no sense how you're christian then okay right so it's like if you're a true student of yoga and you haven't like you should you should prescribe to what's said in this book yeah and basically what he's saying is like there's no postures like it's, it's literally just sitting you're just breathing it's sitting yeah. and breathing yeah. and and relaxing your focus right you know all the other stuff is just like like icing mm -hmm. on the cake that's the not... true cake right but that's not there yeah right but in terms of like, if you're not a student of yoga, then well, could, this is the foundation. Let's say this is the foundation of yoga. Yeah. Yeah. This is what everything stands upon. Yeah, but like, I would argue because if you're like, well, yeah, so you'd say that, like, oh, it's the foundation where everything stands upon. Then I would argue, so you believe that you're better than Lord Krishna, because Lord Krishna, the creator of all, not creator of all, the sustainer of all, he's like, he only prescribed this one way. So mm -hmm. how are you going to expand on what he said? Krishna never right, returned right. and, and yeah, yeah, Krishna yeah, didn't yeah. return and say, oh, actually right. throw in these postures. Okay. Or actually throw in Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Like So it's not exactly Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's like it's like it's um, funny. I try to think of I didn't I know it's not what I meant either, but it's just not a I couldn't find the right analogy. It's like cuz this is where it started, but then everything else was added on, but that's exactly. not what we did not want. But exactly the other things exactly. added on. Like, I because, don't know what you mean. Because humans, yeah. humans add the other stuff. Right, on. right. It's like, oh, he actually meant this. Like he didn't mean that because right. he didn't say that. He only said this. Right, right. But if you're not a student of yoga, I mean, that's the, you could say that about many things, every, right? That's exactly for right. sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, but, but if you look at um, look at people that aren't students of yoga and you mm. look at it as a philosophy text, yeah, uh, it's it's got a lot. It's got a lot in there. Because even in the in the preface of the book, uh, a lot they were mentioning all the people that read it, and they weren't Hindus okay. or students of yoga. They just they just read it, and they were so influenced by it, you know. Like, right. um, well, mm -hmm. Gandhi was obviously, um, but I think like Kennedy read it. Oppenheimer obviously read it because he quoted it when the oh yeah he when the book it. and I, I saw that line in the book and I like highlighted it like <laughs> I, I have become death destroyer of worlds yeah that that's Krishna who says that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's straight up in there so I thought that was kind of yeah cool. that's why you read it right right but he's not he's not like you wouldn't be like oh I'm like a Hindu practitioner no, 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 yoga no, no, practitioner no. it's just like it's good philosophy yeah 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 so I, th I think it's like a lot of it it is. Uh, and it shouldn't be taken necessarily. It's a literal. It's not a literal thing, but like a in in philosophical sense. In for sure, sense. unless unless you claim to be the only time I pull that card about literal truth is when you claim to be a devout student of. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. if I know you are you, a devout student of, then you should be really you'd be very yeah. like into it, like very like, like um, what do you call it? Not extremists. Just don't staunch believer. I don't know. Oh, uh, there's like a. I forgot what I f they they say it for Christians all the time. Like you're a blank Christian, like a. What's well, so like A? What? Oh, no. A. Yeah, I was like. I don't know. What yeah, no, no, no. I, I'll Can't, think about it. It's not coming to my head. Yeah, it's not coming to my head either. Or maybe it's not an A. Maybe I'm just like messing messing up the word. But yeah, so 
yeah, when you follow like when you follow things super in depthly, then mm-hmm. that's when I like to pull that card. The only thing I like about the reason why I'm like I'd say that I'm uh, I I would say that I I like to study Zen very astutely. The reason right. because in Zen there is no way. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's kind of like on itself. Right. You know, it's like if you believe that to be good for you, then do it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But if you look at like the evolution of these these philosophies and teachings, mm-hmm. of course you're gonna hit this, right? Like you have Hinduism, which is like very, uh, it had a lot of great philosophies, and but it's very like mm, strict. Like there's like a caste system, and then people have to like live within those castes. You know what I'm saying? Like you, uh, again, these things not necessarily come out of that, right? Okay. Maybe these could be just. Uh, but they believe in like you know your karma puts you in the specific caste and like. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it comes from the book itself. It's right. No. No. Right. Societal yeah, yeah. understandings oh, of course, of course. or misunderstandings but, right, of it. That for I sure. To... For sure. But then from from that Buddha, uh, Gautama Buddha, yeah. was because Buddha is just a title um, for awakened one, but Gautama, that Buddha, yeah. was from Hinduism, and he's like wait, this is incorrect, so he fought mm. against it. Yeah. And then Zen was a student of Gautama, and he was like, oh, you only have to do this one thing. You don't have to do all the things that <laughs> Gautama said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because even um, Gautama was very strict in his... Is it ascetic? I don't know. Yeah, I forgot what you, the word. You know the words. I think it's ascetic. I don't read books. But yeah, like, you're, like Gautama was a yeah. super... You know, another strict one, you have to follow my eightfold path and like all this. You have to like live perfectly. This is actually why, um, like quick, quick, interesting fact, but I like these two versions of Buddha and I, I wear them on me like, um, cause they're, they're and like, they're like, you know how I look at it? It's like, it's like if you're, you know, when you're on a test and you like write notes on your hand, it's like a cheat sheet. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how I feel about these, like, these like trinkets and these like tattoos, right? It's like they're. They're like cheat sheets. It's like, oh, don't forget this. Right. Right. So, like, I have these two bracelets. One is like the Zen Buddha, which mm-hmm. is the laughing Buddha, which is the fat one. Yeah. Okay. And then you've seen the fat Buddha, right? Yeah. And then the other bracelet is like the Gautama Buddha, right? And it's like, well, why do you have those two? Because they're conflicting. The Gautama Buddha is all about moderation. He's like, okay, control yourself, control your mind. Mm-hmm. And then in, you, that's how life should be moderation, middle way, right? Gautama invented the middle path. Right. And then the fat Buddha, the reason why he's fat is because he's like, no, 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 don't go to the middle path. Enjoy life to the fullest. If you're angry, be fully angry. If you're happy, be fully happy. Mm -hmm. But see, they're like conflicting because it's like if they're both Buddhas, then which is the correct way? Yeah. But there is no correct way because they're both just awake to the reality of there being a mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they're Buddhas. They're awake to the truth of nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we went super. <laughs> so okay. we like we like tangen- tangentially right. went that down happens, all these like though. yeah yeah. But basically, the book is really good. You got to read it if you read it if you like yoga, and also read it if you don't like yoga because it's got a lot of good philosophy in there. I I find oh okay here's here's another takeaway. Uh, I believe aside from the acid thing, where I think that uh, Krishna is just a um, like a like a drug that Arjuna takes. But if you actually look at it, Arjuna is just an ordinary person with an ordinary problem, right? Mm -hmm. And the solution to this is an extraordinary outlook. I I believe that's what enlightenment means. Like ordinary problems, ordinary people, ordinary problems, extraordinary outlook. Okay. Right? Because that's all Krishna did. It's like, okay, well, I have to, like Arjuna's like, okay, I have to kill my family on the battlefield. And Mm. he's having problems with that. Right, but it could be anything. It could be like, oh, I have to go to this job I don't like, or I have to um, take out the trash and it's cold outside, yeah. right? But then Krishna basically just teaches him a way to step outside of himself and look from an objective perspective mm-hmm. of like, okay, relax, chill, it's all good, just do it. Okay, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. And that's like the other philosophy of like the only way out is through. Like mm-hmm. sometimes the only way out is through, because that is yeah. what Krishna teaches. Right. Yeah. yeah but yeah. again, if you haven't read the book. You would think that he taught all these amazing things, and then you would think that, like, if you go to class and then people are like talking about the Bhagavad Gita, like, you know, like you get these yoga teachers, like, ah, oh, I've read the Bhagavad Gita, and I, I, 
like I studied under these masters and teachers and it's like oh man I would never that's how I felt too that's why I started reading them because it's like <laughs> okay well what are these books actually saying because because you know like I believe that you're better than me just because you read the book so I was like so why don't I read the book okay you right, know? Right, and then right. when you read the book it's like it doesn't actually have anything all that other stuff is just added on mm-hmm. it's very like bare bones and minimum minimal okay what what is taught Oh, I see. Yeah. So, mm. Interesting stuff. Any any final thoughts on uh, Hinduism and or the Bhagavad Gita? Um. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 let me just, let me just track back. So Arjuna, normal person. Uh, this is what I believe happened. Arjuna is meant to be a normal person. He's on the battlefield, has to kill his brothers and family. But there is Krishna or a drug, Soma, or some sort of acid and he takes it to remember the truth because he even says that actually at the very end he's like oh i remember what it is you must t- tell me now and it's like yeah because you knew it already you were you were definitely taking some sort of psychedelic mm-hmm. you just forgotten and then like it brings you back to the reality and it's like okay just do your duty right you know, he had an enlightening drug trip mm-hmm. i believe that's what it is oh, yeah. historical reference believe me <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right, final thoughts? Anything? Yeah, it's an interesting perspective, I gotta say. Uh, I don't think most people think about that. He, I, I uh, similarly got they it. They just think, don't think drugs ever were existing in... But they were. They I, are. I, I, so I know that. mentioned so many times. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know. nobody takes it as... Yeah. Or, you know, nobody knows that it's like a drug. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So I just think it's like a... I don't know. A tea or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm but just saying. It's meant to give you like an enlightening revelation. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. But I, I got, I started to think in this term when I read like uh, Graham Hancock's work and like mm-hmm. John Marco Regolo, yeah. Ar- 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 I forgot his name, John Marco Regolo, whatever. But so, that. so these historians who like have actually traced like the history, like esoteric history, like yeah. ancient history, they've noticed that drugs have been used throughout those times. Mm-hmm. And then I read like opium and like it was very commonly used in. Egypt and Greece, right. So like it w- it's yeah. been a part of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even animals do it now. There's yeah, some animals monkeys that do it. Yeah, they're drunk on some stuff. Yeah, the fish do that too. Uh, the birds, sorry, the bird. Certain birds will eat like poisonous fish or something yeah. just to get high. Yeah, I'm seeing it right there. <laughs> the uh, the jaguar. There's a video online. You can check it out. Jaguar getting high off DMT. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's eating like uh, he's eating a plant, and they start tripping. Oh well, yeah, it's, it's a BBC one. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really cool. cool. Okay, I gotta check that out. Yeah, and then the jaguar is tripping. No, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's yeah. But all I think, but that's where that other line comes from. That I was saying before, like mm-hmm. um, all forms of consciousness seek to elevate and expand itself. Yeah, because you know, there's cats and catnip. There's another example. Mm-hmm. They trip out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. So I guess next week it'll be our last one. Vish is going to the motherland of the Bhagavad Gita. I guess. Okay. Yeah. He's going to India for two <laughs> weeks. Yeah. About two and a half weeks, I think it is. Oh, wow. It's kind of long. Damn. All right. True. So next week will be our last weekly roundup for two and a half weeks before Vish gets back. And then we'll probably do a little recap on what you've been up to. Yeah. We'll India. see. I. I think you went last year, right? Didn't yeah, I think you? I went last year. We did yeah. a podcast as well? Yeah. Yeah, about India, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so. I don't think maybe, it'll change much. Maybe but... times have changed. Oh, you're going back to India. Yeah, you got to give me a Shiva. Uh, we're recording this. It's on It's on the thing. I asked you I, last year. I, I know Shiva, you asked me last Shiva year. Shiva statue. But it's it's hard to find that. The reason why it wasn't there is because you got to go to a certain area in India where they focus on Shiva. You know what I mean? I saw a giant Shiva statue. Yeah, but that's somewhere. not in where I'm going, right? Oh. Well, if you find one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Really cool. I was looking for one. Yeah, cool. That'd be sick. <laughs> I'm get that Shiva it's hard one to day. find one, right? Yeah. But you can find a lot of Buddha statues. Ah, <laughs> that's what I kept really, finding there. <laughs> really Buddha, eh? Yeah. Hmm. I guess they're like good trinkets to like sell. Like Ga- Gautama? Uh, I or the fat fat Buddha? I can't remember offhand. No, I don't remember. E- All right. Oh, no, no. I think it was the fat one. The fat one. All right. yeah, yeah, because he's about riches and so you get riches. Mm. But uh, fun fact, you know what the fat Buddha's name is? I know. Budai. 
Okay. And do you know what budai means? I don't know. Buddy. Okay. Doesn't that make sense when you look at him? He's like yeah, a happy yeah. Buddha. He's like, he's mm-hmm. your buddy, yo. And then I was just kind of reading up on him. He, uh, he's just like jovial, has a lot of fun. He's oh, like yeah. Poor. Okay. He's poor. That's why he carries around the sack. And through his poorness, he finds contentment. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. So until next week, stay tuned. And maybe we'll do another book review in the future. Yeah. This is yeah. the first one of the year. Yeah. First one of the year. But we got a bunch. I got a bunch. Yeah. Because I read a bunch. <laughs> right. All right. Until next time. Pugs. A read. Read and understand for yourself. Don't have it be told secondhand to you. Because then you're falling prey to that person's interpretation. Right. Yeah. Basically, just read it for yourself. That's a great, succinct way of saying that. <laughs> Till next time. Take it easy. <laughs> Later. Bye.